Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The Train Studio. I'm your host, Sean Morris. If you can't tell, I'm feeling significantly better, and I have a voice, so that makes filming uh, infinitely uh, easier for me. So um, welcome back. We're going to get into the uh, second part of this sort of flocking tutorial, and I might have just kind of a bonus clip uh, to add to this as well. So I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of a sort of a gradient um, video for you to show you kind of the different working times that you can consider and kind of giving you a timeline when you're working on pieces uh, to find that balance between big size and working times. And so I'll do that as a separate part of this, but I do want to get into these uh, real quick. Uh, so just to recap, if you didn't watch part one, we had the no prep surface. Uh, we had the painted surface here. So two coats of paint, uh, one brown, one green, just to kind of give you some uh, senses of what uh, what base color might work better for you. Uh, then we had the um, application of the uh, technical paints from, uh, from GW. Uh, one is down with a zero paint, and then it's been uh, sealed once with the scenic cement, just to make sure that the flakes don't come off. And the reason you do that is it's a crackling finish. And so you are going to decrease the surface area. And if you don't have any adhesive to kind of help solidify that, you could have very, very little uh, surface contact. And when you are applying your glue, you could end up making more holes. And on an unpainted surface, that is going to be problematic for you for sure. Uh, the second one here is a painted surface, so double painted here um, with the brown paint, and then we came in and did the exact same treatment, and then we've also uh, sealed that up with the scenic cement. Uh, this one here is a sculpt mold in a flat sort of application, again, uh, painted twice just to make sure it has good coverage. And there's inside profile, you can see fairly low, uh, you know, one to two mil thick at best. And then we did a larger one here for you to give you some undulations just to see that you can build up this uh, considerably. Um, and then double painted this with the brown paint as well. So those are our surfaces. Now, the application technique that I'm going to use on these is going to be effectively the exact same. I did prepare three different mixtures, and so I might do uh, different parts on there uh, with those different formulas just to kind of give you a sense. But I'll probably mix and match because uh, doing two on the same one makes it a little bit difficult to see uh, in comparison. So what I do have here is a pure scenic cement mixture. Now, I don't recommend this being your primary application. It's not thick enough. Um, this is going to be used to penetrate. It's going to be used to fill in gaps. That's how I fill it. Uh, I use it anyway. And so it's really, really thin. It does have that wicking agent and it is a glue. However, it is quite thin and is going to be more pooly and less adhesive going onto a very flat surface. So not recommending this as your first application. You can try it uh, if you like. This right here is my go-to. It's Weld Bond glue. Uh, this is the pure form. You can see Weld Bond is very, very viscous, so it's not going to have a lot of run. Um, however, when you do put this on, you're going to have to be cognizant of how far you spread it before it starts to set up. Uh, this does need air to penetrate and dry it. It will give you a crystal clean finish and it will be glossy, just keeping that in mind, versus the scenic cement, which is a more of a matte finish. They both dry clear, so there's no worries about yellowing or anything there. This mixture is about a 70-30 weld bond to scenic cement. I like this application for a couple reasons, or this uh, product for a couple reasons. The application process of this is really, really clean. It flows really, really nicely. It also uh, comes off the brush a little bit cleaner versus weld bond kind of gumming up your brush because again, it is a thick adhesive. I like this one as my preference. Uh, however, um, it is going to probably require that you do a topographical treatment afterwards because some of the areas, if it's not mixed perfectly, will be a little bit more diluted. And so you'll have a little less weld bond and a little bit more scenic cement. It can also thin out and dry in areas where that dilution is not 100% uh, um, uh, mixed up. And so you can have different drying times and patterns as well as adhesive properties. So um, I still use this because I typically will two and three coat my flockings anyway. Um, but just keep in mind that you're going to want to have this uh, mixed up thoroughly and you want to make sure that the mixture is just about right. 70-30 seems to be a good mix for me. I used to do it a bit thinner, but I found I didn't have as good of results with that. So what we're going to do so we're going to go to the no prep surface and on this no prep surface what i'm going to do is i'm going to just use the straight weld bond here so just getting some on the brush and i'm just going to go ahead and brush it straight uh, over uh, the surface there we 
There we go. It's going to brush that on. We're going to leave that a minute or so, and then we're going to come back and apply the flocking. All right, so we've given that about a minute to, to set up and we're gonna come in with the flocking. For this, I'm gonna go stock standard across the um, at each sample piece just because I think that'll be most consistent for you guys. There won't be any variations in in sort of the um, product that I'm using and or the, the variety of the flocking. So for this, I'm just gonna use fine turf, green grass, one of my favorites, uh, Woodland Scenics product. It's gonna go down on here. I usually just decant a bunch into the, into the cap. Um, there's all kinds of application techniques and that I'm actually going to talk about in that slight bonus uh, footage for you. Um, but for this, again, keeping as consistent as possible so that you guys can really see how the various techniques, um, uh, so how the various uh, basing products will affect it. I don't want to uh, vary too many things, uh, so we'll keep the variables fairly simple. So for this, I usually just grab my fingers. I'm going to use my left hand here for the video, but I'm going to switch to my right. And so I just usually grab a little bit and I like to do a bit of a pinch technique as I go over the top. So here I go. This method is really, really um, effective, especially if you're going to add any um, variety, if you're doing any transitions, if you're doing any gradients, if you want to add a highlight color, because you can leave spots purp purposefully um, blank and then go back in and fill those in with your next color. You would do that at the same time, ideally, um, but in this particular case, I'm going to go all green and I want to make sure that I'm trying to get as much of the color as, or as much as the pink as I can uh, covered. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just let that set up. The reason being is I want to have um, the glue really grip the flocking. Years ago, I used to be very impatient and I used to like do a quick tap off and then go back in and then keep filling it in. But now I've kind of moved to a method where I like to set things up for a little while. Um, then we'll go ahead and what I call tamping it off, we'll tamp it off and then we'll go back in and see what we need to do. So let's go ahead and set that one aside. Let's grab another one while we're here and, and just excuse the mess that'll, that'll remain there for a second. What we're going to do on this next one is I'm going to do um, one application of the straight weld bond and then I'll do one application of the mixture just to get a little bit of a, a, of a difference there for you. So again, coming in with this, we'll do... Um, We'll do straight weld bond on brown this time because we've already done one with green. A little bit boring as you guys watch me paint it on, but again, you can just uh, sort of see. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to brush it out as thin as possible. I am just trying to get a nice even coat though, because if you leave any like pools or bubbles um, and you want to have a flat surface that's actually going to be impacted uh, by that. So next I'm going to switch over here to the 7030 weld bond and uh, glue mixture and then I'll put that on. You can see that it flows um, quite a bit more uh, easily but you can also see that pooling that I'm talking about. So um, for this one you're going to have to really kind of move and manipulate it around a little bit but you can probably could see the distinct difference in, in how that all, all goes on and how fluid that is. So I think I got fairly even coverage there. Okay, I'll do this one on camera while we're working live time here. Go ahead and just set that down and I'll do the sprinkle technique over the top. And I just pinch and roll the fingers. And this is fine flocking. So this is really going to be about as fine as you can get. Um, and you're still going to see that it's going to be difficult for it to get adequate coverage on the first go around, just because the material itself will start to block and prevent other material from um, touching the surface. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you another thing that you can do if you're worried about that. So I'm going to take, um, just this as a, as a stamp 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly press one time that down just to give it a li little bit more of a flat finish. And if I grab that other piece that I did, you're going to see this is a bit more flat than this. But both are, at this point, identical in terms of application. And we'll see when we come back when they dry, is that actually the case? Does both techniques do the same, get the same result? Do both um, mixtures, formulations of adhesive get the same result? So I'm going to set these ones aside. We're going to come back and we're going to do the other ones. And then we're going to set them all aside, come back. We're going to talk about where our results are and then how to go about either achieving different results, fixing any errors, or are we happy with what we have? Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're back with the next clip and ready to do the next two pieces. Um, one of the things that I always uh, come across uh, in tutorials is my fear that I am not telling you as much information as I possibly can and or showing you as much. So um, in between uh, clips here, what I decided that I was going to do is on these next two pieces, we're going to use the same sort of adhesive material, but I am going to kind of show you a few different flockings because I want to show you two different techniques. If we're going to make it comprehensive, let's do it. So what I have for you here is one of my f absolute favorite uh, blends. It's the blended turf and the, it's the earth blend. I use this actually quite a bit with my greens, with my browns, with yellows, or in dry and arid places where I'm not even going to put anything else. I really just like this mix. It's got a little bit of red as well as yellow into it. And then of course, some earthy brown tones. And I'll show you kind of where I use this and how I uh, like to use this in my application. So I might even tie this into one of the greens just to kind of show you. And then the other one that I have here, uh, ignore this, it's not actually going to be soft like snow, uh, but it's going to be uh, not a Woodland Scenics product at all. This is one of the, the bulk buys uh, from Scenic Express. And I'm not sure the exact tone, but it's, it's kind of a lighter brown tone. And I think it will complement uh, with this brown quite nicely. And then we're going to show you how we can tie it into this, uh, this green uh, earth blend uh, here as well. So what we're going to do is we have the two applications. One's got the painted surface as well as the um, the cracked or the technical paste by um, GW. And then this one here is just the straight uh, GW paste. Now this one is applied over paint. Uh, that's why the paint's there to show you. And then this one is just a straight pink. So what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to use uh, my, my blend, my 70-30 blend uh, on this one. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to just hit sort of a portion of this not not all of it uh, we're going to leave we're going to leave this one section um, open and we're going to leave that open so that we can kind of show you later how to do a back blend and kind of create a little bit of a gradient so we're going to do that on there and then on this other one what we'll do is we'll swap over to um We'll swap over to the straight woodland scenics. And one of the things I wanted to tell you as well, the straight scenic cement, which we have here, um, what you can do is if you want, when you're uh, applying, and on this one, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this one as just a full blend. What I sometimes will do is just dip my brush in the scenic cement, and then that gives my brush a little bit of uh, extra liquid so that when I'm trying to um, take off the woodland scenics, uh, or sorry, the woodland seeds, the weld bond, it just comes off the brush a little bit cleaner. It's still quite viscous. It's still going to have that, that thickness that is the weld bond, but it's going to uh, flow off the brush a little bit easier. And I'm just using sort of a, a dipping, a dipping technique to do that. So it will add a little bit of um, liquefied uh, adhesive to the weld bond. So we'll thin it out a little bit, but you can, um, you can do that quite sparingly, so you don't have to do it after every single dip. But so there we have it, this one versus this one. So this is obviously thicker, and and you can see it's just really filled in all the crackle. And then here is that seventy thirty mix. So that one's obviously penetrating quite a bit more as it does have the wicking agent uh, in it. So let's go ahead and set these aside. I'll flock these right on camera. So what I'm going to do for this one is let's go with um, a bit more of this brown on this one. So my hand will be kind of in the way, but, and I'll do a little, um, I'll do some patching on this one. So I'm going to do mostly the brown, but I will come in with this and we'll create a little bit of a, a little bit of a gradient. So we'll mix, we'll mix the two together.
go. And I will not uh, tamp this one down at all. I'm going to leave it. So I'll show you what the difference there is. And on this one, because we are going to come in and create a little bit of a gradient afterwards, I'm going to start with this first blend and I'm just going to go around the perimeter just a little bit there. And then the rest of it, I'm going to set up with the brown. I'm trying to sprinkle this high enough that you guys don't see my hand in the camera. Do my apologies. And for this one, we will tamp it. Just use this as a little bit of a stamp to get that down. So there we have that one. And of course, as we brush this off, it'll look slightly different, but that'll be the two blended together. I bring these back. You can see that it's still a different shade. It's got the tones. This one's got more of the earth blend. This one's got, well, this has a kind of a mix with the earth blend over the top, and this one has more brown with a little bit of a gradient set into the corner where the pink is. So we'll set those aside, and then we're on to our last two, and we'll just keep it, we'll keep it rolling here. So what we're going to do on this one, uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do just a straight brushing of, let me figure out which one, just a straight brushing of the scenic cement. So the most liquefied version, it's going to flow a little bit, and I'm just going to brush this over. Now, obviously, the benefits of this is it penetrates your surface significantly faster. It will flow very easy, um, but it will be the most thin application. So what we're going to do with this is I'm going to, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to come back in with just a green. I'm going to coat this one with just the green. And because this one is just the, um, just the scenic cement, I am going to give this one a stamp um, because I do want to have I do want to have that liquid absorbed into the surface as best I can. So there, there's that one. And we're going to do a sun kiss look on this one afterwards. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, for that, you kind of use some different gradients of green and you can, and you can really sun kiss some of the points of that. So we're going to set that one aside. I have to try to remember what all these ones are now that they're all covered. I don't have them marked on the edges. Um, I also want to talk about this. So this obviously now has three blends all mixed together. And so a lot of people would think like, hey, you know what? I should probably chuck that out. Um, if I mix this all together just and flatten it out, um, that's not a terrible ground mix for some future project or some future uh, basing, et cetera, that you might want to do. So you don't have to discard all your sort of um, excess material. I can flock on different pieces of paper or surfaces to keep those individually um, mixed or, or I guess separate, the mixes separate. Um, or I can just kind of have this mix mash that you keep building up and there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you have a place where you wanted to have it sort of all like, you know, tore up and, and not necessarily looking lush and, and beautiful and uh, a little brown green mix isn't going to be the end of that. There's nothing to say that I can't take this and then, you know, change the tone once it's on my my application by adding even more flock to it so this isn't waste material uh unless you determine it as waste if they find a use for it it is useful material all right last but not least we're going to come in with this sort of undulated surface and for this one i'm going to swap um let's go let's go straight weld bone on this one um and we'll go just build up uh, all of these mounts. So on this one, because I already have undulations in the base material, in the sculptor mold that's on here, um, I'm a little less concerned if I have some bumps within my glue and if I got any buildups or anything like that. I don't want to put it super excessive because it will take a while to dry and it will form little bubbles, but I don't have to be um, overly concerned if I have any pockets or pooling uh, on this one. And again, for this one right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a bit of a, you know what? We've talked about it. Let's make it happen. 
let's just let's just go with this blend. Let's just see what this would would end up doing. On the fly uh, thought. And if we don't like some element of it, we can change the tone with the next with the next layer. I don't know if I have quite enough here, but we're gonna try to make it work. And obviously with this one, I can't do a, a tapping of uh, a piece of foam to kind of create a stamp. However, that doesn't mean that you can't, um, you can't tamp your material down. Um, so one of the things you can do um, is if you just lightly tap your finger, just move it over and just lightly tap it down. You don't want to press at all, but you can give it a nice little, nice little tap. You know what? That blend's not terrible. It's not terrible. So we'll go with that one right there and we'll get that uh, on there. So now a little bit of a waiting game here, folks. We're going to set all of these aside. So let me see the order of operation here. I think this was no prep. This was our 50-50 green brown. Uh, this was our no prep uh, technical. This was our technical with brown uh, undercoat. Uh, this is our sculpt the mold painted and just straight green. And I forget all of the, what we use for all of them. I'll obviously just go back and reference my own video. And then here we are for, and it's not so much what you use for adhesive, because I'll tell you right now, all of them will work. Um, this is our sculpt the mold uh, straight weld bond. The, the whole point of the flocking per, uh, portion of this is to find out what technique is going to work best and if you run into any issues or need to go back or you want to change a, uh, you know, a portion of your flocking and or add to it, what's the best method after you get the base layer down to do that? Because the next step in, in terms of adding additional flockings, fixing and or thickening is really the important part. It's more of the technical process. Certainly the base work and the prep work that you've done to get to this point is really important. The technique and how to put the flock on is very easy. You guys saw it. It's, it's if you can pinch your fingers together, you got it. Um, but then how to change it after the base layer is where it gets a little bit more technical. Do I need to? What is it that I need to do? What is the proper application? What is the proper adhesive? And what is the proper technique to make sure that I don't mess up all of the great work that I've already done to this point? And of course, we'll talk about all that in the next segment. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. We've let each of these pieces now dry uh, three to four hours, uh, and we're going to do the reveal. And uh, we're going to be, um, you know, looking really for the type of coverage, the consistency, and how much exposed ground that we have. Now, exposed ground doesn't mean that you have a bad result if you were going for that look. If you're going for a really thick uniform look then we're going to show you how to repair or patch that or give it a second layer. Uh, if you want kind of more of a feathered look based on the fact that you want to expose whatever ground cover you used um, that's a perfectly fine result as well. Or we may want to create some sort of transitions or gradients and then finally we may want to have some uh, sort of variation within uh, the the flocking that we've used. So let's go ahead, ahead and have a look at some of the results. Uh, so let's go to the very first one. Uh, this is going to be our uh, completely no prep surface. Uh, and I believe uh, we did full weld bond on this. We're going to go ahead and do the tap. So you can see here, and then there's your result. So now from a side profile, it's probably going to look quite fine. But as you tilt it, tilt it towards the light, you can start to see that we have the pink shining through. Now, this is going to be on there quite nicely. I'm just going to give it a good flick. It's going to be on there fairly uh, nicely. It's not going to rub off. If I really start to rub at it, I probably can start removing it because it's only a single layer. Um, it's not terrible, um, but certainly a covering of paint would have done this uh, a much better uh, sort of result. So that's where we're at. And I'm going to show you what we can do to that. Even if you didn't prep your surface, there's ways to save this to give it a little bit of a thicker patch. Now we're going to have a look at the second one. This is going to be, uh, again, this is going to have one side weld bond. I think we did weld side uh, weld bond on brown and then the 70-30 mix of scenic cement and weld bond. I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, a really aggressive tap here. Again, painted surfaces on both sides. 
So if I tilt this towards the light, you're going to see, yes, we still have some of the painted surface shining through. And in fact, that's going to be visible on both sides. But what you are going to see is that you will have a distinct lighter color or more ground showing through on the brown than you will on the green. So green here, brown there. This is a much better um, result. If you put those in side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the distinct difference. These were effectively covered in the same way, same method, but you can see how much that brown and green paint really gives you to adding bulk or depth to your look. We'll move over next to the brown. This one here, I believe we did the gradient on. We were looking to set the gradient in. So obviously we're gonna have no coloration uh, or no coverage here. We had that slight gradient built in with the earth blend and then the brown here. Brown on the brown paste or technical paint um, is looking pretty good. You can still see some ground cover come through, but because we picked something that was complementary to the ground cover, it's really not going to show up. So that one is not a bad result at all. Um, next up, we did the earth with the brown mix. Remember, we put the brown down first and then did a top coating of the earth, putting these inside profile here. You can see that this has a much a thicker, more robust look because we're losing the, we're, we're having the illusion here that we have no gradient. And so this one just appears to be nice and thick. I believe we did this one with um, the 50 or the 70 30 mix. So I really like how this one came out. And because we have the green throughout, it gives a bit more of a uniform look as opposed to, uh, to this section. Next up, we have the sculpt -a mold green. I believe we did this one in a nice thick covering of the weld bond. Uh, I think we actually did this one with the 7030 as well. Um, either way, this one came out by far uh, the nicest in terms of lushness. But remember, um, this is going to be over a surface that's going to be a little bit more porous and it's actually going to accept some moisture. Therefore, it's not going to dry out or pool or have any, any drying pools. And so while there is still some brown showing through, if I put these in side-by-side -side comparison, it still looks to be much more thick and lush. Uh, this one has a little bit of brown showing through here, but definitely has some thick portions. And this one just feels a little bit uh, nicer. And I'm going to I'm going to show you how to top treat all these as well. And then last but not least, we we picked up our mix. Uh, subsequently, we're making that again on the ground here, and we did this over the uh, uneven sculpt -a mold surface because we were looking. I'm again just giving that aggressive tap. We were looking for a way to kind of use our scraps. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a brush with my finger. And there you go. This one looks really, really nice. Not only a cool color, but I do really like how that gave those mounds and those sort of rolling, rolling hills. Remember, you can scale this up or down. This might be to scale. Uh, it might be rolling hills if you're doing a really microscopic scale, or maybe it's just a small bump uh, if you're doing some sort of larger scale, you know, 28 mil or above. Um, but certainly this came out super nice and it's got a nice coating. And because we used the complementary colors to the brown undercoat, you really can't tell where there's any thin or, or, th or thickening of this. It just just really looks nice and uniform and it has a great variety uh, in there. So really happy with how that came out as well. End result is all of these will do the trick. We have coverage on all of these, even this one. You know, I'm just going to more aggressively brush that for you so you guys can basically hear that. It's not really going to come off. A little bit will shed. I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to aggressively brush all of these just to show you that even that first layer, and remember, and you will have some shedding always, I can seal that in so I don't need to shed it down that much, at, but the top treatment that I'm gonna show you is going to really lock that all in. So we got really nice uh, coverages there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off camera and I'm going to just come back and we're going to just re-prep these surfaces. I'm gonna show you how I can go ahead and start building these out or locking these things in or adding a little variety. So I'll do a sort of a variation within the next stages just to show you all those different things. But the bottom line is folks, you can see that you're going to get, as the more work you did, we went from a no prep surface to the max prep surface here. 
Um, and the law and the more time you spend on that application, the better the results going to be, whether it's going to be a nice green shade there versus this, like you can see, have a look at the difference. This is a little bit of sculpt the mold and paint. This is a no prep. It's identical in application. And just look at the difference that you get in terms of your finish. Um, likewise with this brown, you know, we have this brown and then the other brown. While they're similar in application, you can see that there's a slight difference in how that came out just by adding a little bit more uh, depth and variety to the flocking. This green versus this green. Again, you can see that the green undertone sets more of the tone for the flock itself um, versus I would really like the flock color to be what's dominant there. So while we have the same color, we do have the dominant undertone setting, setting sort of the color variation there. Likewise with the brown as well. So this just shows you a brown undertone with a really thin layer. This shows you here a green undertone with the same layer versus here where you add a little bit of undulation to the surface and a little bit of brown tone, you're going to get that natural um, variation. And what that is caused by is the fact that all the flocking is not adhered to the exact same surface. So even that little thin layer of sculpt mold is going to do wonders if you're looking for something with a little bit more natural variety to it. So uh, that's enough about the flocking. Let's come back in in a second and I'll show you kind of how to do that secondary application. All right, guys, so we're back with the, the final stage here, and then we'll have a reveal at the end kind of thing. Um, but, but what we'll do is I'm going to go in and kind of show you the, the various sort of secondary layers that you can do uh, given the results that you got on your first application. So if I had something like this right here, and you know what? This can result from, from a couple things. One, it can result that I didn't have very good uh, coverage on my first layer. It also could result where I had really great coverage on the you know, the other sections, and then this might have been the tail end, or this might have been the first glue that I put down and I let it dry too long. So this one here, in my opinion, just really needs to be recoded. It it's uh it's so thin that even a secondary layer of sealant is not going to be enough to add um, the bulk that I need in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in the Scenic Cement just to get it a little bit more liquefied. I'm not going to go to the 70/30 mix on this one just because I'm going to show you the difference of going back to the straight weld bond. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start um, basically painting over uh, this this first flocking. Now what's going to happen here is I'm really going to be saturating um, the, the layer and I'm going to be putting some more bulk uh, into it and this might move around a bit of the the flocking that's already down um, which is fine because in this particular application it wasn't that great. I didn't have good coverage. Um, whoops, got a little bit too much on my finger there. So I didn't have good coverage. So what I really need to do is I almost need to go back and be like, you know what, I'm going to start as if I don't have any flocking at all. And I'm going to come in and bulk out uh, this layer. Now, the plus side of this is that I have a very absorbent surface now um, in the form of the first application of flocking. And so that's actually going to help me uh, make this patch repair. Now, this technique I would not use how I just did it unless I was going in to like basically resurface an entire area. I'm not going to try to come in and do that as a spot treatment. This is not where you're going to want to use straight weld bond. Um, what I am going to do is I'm just going to come here and I'm going to re uh, recoat that surface. Remember, this is a no prep surface. And so we're going straight over pink foam um, initially, and now we're going back over with a secondary coat of, of the flocking because we want to make sure, I'm going to give this one a press, we want to make sure that we get better coverage on this in this second go around. All right, we'll set that aside. We'll come back in a few hours and check that one. Next up, um, this is going to be the, the painted version uh, with, again, the, uh, the flocking applied a little bit better because we had the undertone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between coming in with this straight weld bond and doing a, a spot treat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just treat a patch on this. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and this is straight weld bond again. And I'm going to patch treat this. And I'm purposely going to um, just keep this, this isolated 
to a, to a patch so it's clear. I am going to feather the edges just so you guys can see I'm not cheating. I'm going to feather the edges so it's not going to, in theory, have a big build up around the edge. I'm just going to feather that right to the edge there. So I am going to feather that out and I'm just going to do that. So I went across the brown and the green here. I'm going to come back in with my secondary layer of flocking. I'm going to just treat, well, obviously it's only going to adhere to the, to the spot treat area anyway. But I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to spread it over the whole thing so that you guys can't see just where the treated area is. Tamp that. I'm going to set that one aside. Now, this one that had uh, good coverage uh, on the sculpta mold, good surface, uh, good surface adhesion. I like this, but what I want to do is I maybe want to come in and add a little variety. I want to make a, a little bit of variation in this. This would be where I would switch over to either my watered down weld bond, um, or I would switch to um, the straight scenic cement. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to go to the watered down weld bond and I'm going to do another application. And so I'm going to brush this, brush this over. So I'm kind of getting a nice saturation effect. So this is going to be very similar to the no treat surface application, but I'm going to be using the watered version. So it's going to, it's going to spread a little bit nicer. I'm just, I'm dipping back and forth here. If you guys, this is straight scenic cement here, just dipping into the, to the, uh, to the diluted 7031. one. Just, I'm just want to have as much uh, moisture on the brush as possible. Okay. So then I'm going to put that down. Now, what you're going to notice is right here, this will happen. The more saturation you have, you can see it's actually going to start taking up some of your flocking if it's oversaturated. Um, so the reason that you want to be careful with putting the glue down onto a surface like uh, oversaturating is because you'll you'll actually break the adhesion that you already had. And this and this was well dry, so it wasn't like this was uh, still wet or anything like that. So you want to be careful you're not moving around too too much of what you have. However, let's go in and do a little bit of a, a spot treat on this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in now. I'm going to come in with a little variety here. I'm going to come in and hit this with a little bit of the earth tone. I'm going to set an undertone there. I'm going to come in with a little bit of the straight, straight green. really going to build up the bulk of this. And then, you know what, I'm going to sun kiss this with just a touch, touch of lighter green. Okay. I'm actually going to just go ahead and tamp that off just so that I can make sure I have all the undertone surfaces dry. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and set that one aside. Now, my last one, and uh, forgive us for the length of this tutorial, but like I said, I wanted to make this as comprehensive as possible so you guys aren't found wanting for my for my techniques. This one I like. I like every part of this. I want to sun kiss this just a little bit just to hit some of these high points, but I love every part of this. But what I want to do for this one is I want to lock in what I already have. So I'm going to take some, oh, I see that I have a pipette that's not the best here. Let me see if I can, there we go. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to just come in and I just want to dribble, just dribble. Hopefully you guys can see that, the scenic cement on there. And you'll see that wicking effect. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. I'm being very careful. I'm not trying to drop too much in any one location. In fact, I typically will do this with an airbrush. Um, there we go. Sorry, my pipette has a little small hole in the cap, so it's going to leak a little bit. Now, let's just say you're doing something and you're like, oh man, I oversaturate that. Grab yourself a Kleenex if you can get to the edge. Watch this like magic. You guys have seen this, right? How absorbent these guys can be. So this is just a great technique if you get, ever get too much. And if you can't get to an edge, you can just go ahead and just tap it on the top. That's fine. Same premise applies though. 
if you have an area that's been sealed in and you're adding this much moisture and you're overly brushing it or coming in with a brush, it's going to move your stuff around. So be very, very careful not to do that. Now, as I said, I loved every part of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and set a little bit of shadow and set some shadow into the, into the, um, the valleys here. A little bit more green, a little bit of valley shadow, tap that off. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to sun kiss the top here, a little bit on this ridge and this ridge and this ridge and just sort of feather, feather, feather. I like it, like it, like it. There we go. Just a little blow that off of camera. And there we go. So now I've added in some nice sun-kissed um, little rolling hills here. So we're going to set these all aside. That'll be the end. Um, by the way, that last color that I used, just so you guys know, this is again a Scenic Express. So when I showed you that other one before, the brown, you can get them in the shakers and it's their, and their, their brand, or you can buy them in the bags, which is just cheaper. And then you can just de uh, decant them into your own um, into your own shaker. So, you know, years ago, I just bought shakers. And when I got smart, I bought bags. So, uh, so what we now have is this one, this one, this one, and this one. And so you can see the hope is that we've got uniform application. I didn't do a great prep job on here, but I'm hoping that I can bring this back up to a better prep job. I did a better prep job here, but I wanted to add a little bit of bulk to that. I did an even better prep job here, but when I was moving it around, I, I oversaturated. So I go back in and I try to use, you know, methods to repair those patches here. I really, really loved it. I wanted to lock it in and add a secondary layer. And I'm hoping that top layer gets locked in. So that's the, that's the gradient. It doesn't matter where you start, how you did it. Um, there's ways to fix repair and, or make it look better. So there you have it, guys. We'll come back at the very, very final. I'm going to show you what that looks like. We'll have some final thoughts, wrap this tutorial up. I hope that this gives you guys enough info to go into your flocking projects with confidence um, based on wherever you are in, in the hobby spectrum, what you can do, what materials you have available to prep. I think you guys can get a good result no matter what using very few techniques. You don't have to have a lot of, uh, you don't have to have seven blends of flock either. You can do it with one. And if you like the result, then you like the result. If you want to have variety, you know kind of where to go. Get a sort of a neutral tone, get an undertone, and then get a top tone. Like I said, you kind of sun kiss an area to make it ha have a little extra pop. Grass tufts are another level altogether. They will make all of this look amazing. You guys know Gamers Grass, go check them out. Um, that would be the next evolution and a really another way to add some features. A few rocks, twigs, etc., will really start to make your groundwork pop. And I think you guys will literally like it. So let's come back at the end. We'll look at the final result and we'll call this one done. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back with the final segment of this tutorial. And don't forget, I am going to do that bonus video just talking a little bit about some of the uh, considerations you should make if you're doing some larger scale flocking um, uh, items, tables, etc. Uh, obviously, that will be part of the Hobbit project as well, where we'll be doing some absolutely uh, grand scale uh, flocking jobs. But um, having a look at these, again, I just left them. We're going to come back and have a look. Uh, remember, we did a topographical treatment of, of this one here. Uh, this one, we went in and did this, this straight up uh, weld bond over top of the first layer. And you can see, there it is, folks. That's the fix. So this is a no prep surface done with two layers of weld bond. And you have an absolute coverage with no visibility of the pink at all. So you guys thought at the beginning of this, this was going to be the absolute worst and terrible one. This tutorial basically wanted to show you that you can do almost nothing. And if you have proper flocking technique, you will be fine. That's on a pink surface. So there you have it. The, the camera does not lie. It is covered. Um, it, it was, it'll be strong. I can go over and saturate that with the straight up scenic cement as well to get a nice seal if I want. I could do all the sun kiss, uh, you know, options on this, adding tufts, etc. But there you have it. The no prep option will get you the results with a few steps. This was the painted version. Remember what we did here though, we did a spot treatment. And here's what I want to show you folks. This untreated, untreated spot treatment. If you're just going to try to go in and patch out pieces, 
it's not going to give you a great result. You're going to get these transitions. Remember, I did feather that as much as possible, but you will get these ugly patches because of the density difference. And this is never going to be my recommendation for fixing things. You have to go wide scale, full scale, or you're going to have to come up with a method that's going to completely recover your surface. And so going into spot treat is not going to give you the desired result. And this is why you want to make sure that when you're putting down flock, you're uniformly applying both your flock and your adhesive. Patchwork's not going to work unless you're going for some sort of weird patch. Uh, I would never recommend it just going in to treat a single space. And this is why it's super, super important when you're doing this, and I'll talk about this in the other video as well, that if you have large scale projects, you have to work both quickly and you have to work smart. You have to work with natural transitions, roads, buildings, fence edges, somewhere where you can end your flocking, flock it over and then move on to another place. You're going to have a really hard time to come in and transition and get two edges to flow together unless you're going to treat the large scale. So not the best option. Remember this one right here, we came in and we did the uh, additional flocking. We added in some other colors. And remember this one here, we had to be careful because we started to move some material around of which I knew that would purposely happen. That's an oversaturation piece. So now we've come in and because we were able to move that uh, liquid, that liquid uh, adhesive into all spaces, this allowed us to treat, remember we went wider than we needed to, but this allowed us to treat all the areas and we didn't get any of those unsightly um, patches that we had on that other one. Again, just looking at those uh, two, you can see the distinct patch on there. Um, but again, mixing in the flocks and it's nice and hard. That liquefied secondary layer really goes in and locks in this. And while it looks nice and lush and, and, uh, and it is, um, it's also got a really strong surface to it that gives you a lot of playability and not a lot of shed. You're not going to, like that's aggressive and you're not going to get anything off of that. Lastly, but not least, again, just tapping that, you're not seeing any shed come off that at all. And this is where we went in and just gave that sun kiss look on the top. And you can see we can add a lot of variety in by adding a few flocks in there. So, you know, one or two colors will achieve the, the really nice look. And you can get some really cool variation within that, whether you want to keep it on the dark green tones. You could even add some, some darker greens if you wanted to go in and create some, some more valleys. I could have done that here as well. Um, but both of these techniques are really, really nice. You're going to get a nice, hard finish on that. Hard not shedding, but yet you're not going to have this like packed look like that grass still looks like grass and it gives you the nice subtle uh, tones there. So there you have it, folks. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what technique, what prep work you do. If you do the right stuff in the right order and you know how to kind of work around and work around either mistakes, errors and or with the surface that you have, however you've prepped it, I'm hoping that you found some workarounds here, some solutions for you and some, some I guess, um, initiative and some power and some knowledge to go out and track, uh, you know, tackle your own project, um, whether it's a small base or a full table. Um, and if you make mistakes, you, you know, don't worry about it. You can work back, you can recode, you can do all kinds of things. I would say this though, just give yourself a little bit of time. One of the things that I did very early in my terrain making was if I came across a mistake, I wanted to fix it right away. I didn't want to let things dry. I wanted to scrape them off. I wanted to reapply. I wanted to kind of layer, layer, layer. And that actually led to a lot more disasters than I would have liked to admit. So take your time, let things dry. If they don't look great after you've let them dry, just go back in and tackle it again, but give that process some time to work through. And I think with all these tools, this knowledge, I think you guys will be perfectly fine and I can't wait to see the results. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Cheers.